Villagers have been oppressing us for ages by demanding ridiculous prices for goods. But don't fear, dear comrade. The Revolutionary Party, led by none other than me, will change this injustice. In 100 days, I will build a village where one can just take what one needs. Shortly after coming to this world, I found this village. I intended to convert it to communism instead of building a completely new one. At least until I found that you trade coal for money, you capitalistic swine. You didn't take that personally, right? So I can just close that door. Zuka, Bliat! No, go away, go away! Oh, you picked the wrong house, fool. Thanks to my enormous frontal lobe, I successfully rid the villagers of the boar plague. But even after that, they didn't give me any emeralds as thanks and kept to their materialistic ways. This village is rotten to the core. We need to gather our strength, their resources, burn the village to the ground and build a completely new city. Our new communist village on this mountain doesn't have money for fancy architects. So, I make square. Thanks to some sugarcane I found, I can finally make vodka. And our manifesto by pouring vodka over a book. I couldn't read through the entire thing, but Marx himself summed it up as the abolition of private property. There shouldn't be any repercussions if I imprison the mayor of the town and make him trade his emeralds for sticks, right? With my, um, our new wealth, I built another architectural masterpiece. We will put things we contribute into a community chest and in turn take only that what we need. There is no better food than nya nya, so I captured some dumb sheep. And no, this dish wasn't created by a furry, but by a proud Russian who may have been a Nekomimi. Despite exploiting the nearby town, we still didn't have enough money to afford anything but dirt houses. And that's mainly due to the instructor I hired not straying from his foolish, materialistic ways. Uh, the initial backbone of every human country is farming, and I planned on eventually being called the Potato King. The message of my humanitarian revolution and free food seem to have spread far. Three of the nomads that arrive will work the fields, while one will help me cut down more trees so I can sell more sticks to the capitalistic village. I have enough resources to make the rest of the citizens' houses out of stone or wood, but ah, then not everything would be equal. Ah, dirt it is. And the emeralds I save by building everything out of dirt even allow me to invest in more lumberjacks that can make me more money with which I can buy even more lumberjacks who can make me even more money with it. Okay, a new law has been decided. All houses will be made out of dirt from here on out. The only problem is that the rooms look empty, so let's add some chairs. Now, people that share an apartment can sit down stare at each other and discuss politics. And you too better give me lower prices, else I'll take away your only source of light. Speaking of no light, I started our first mining operation and employed a farmer to take care of the sheep. And now that we got the ball rolling, I just need to add more houses. Oh, wait, wait. Why aren't my people happy? Is it because they compare their dirt shacks to mother nature? Huh. I can just block their side with a wall, but if they realize that I want to build a wall, there will be protests. <clears throat> Everyone, we as the Revolutionary Party know how much you love nature. That is why we've decided to plant trees around our wonderful country to make you happy. Definitely not to hide the fact that I'm building a wall. We want to keep you educated. The Revolutionary Party is building a library where you can read our manifesto. Nothing else. Just our manifesto. Now people, come, come go read. Okay, you need to work for now, but... Has anyone been actually been reading? Does anyone ever enter the fucking library? Why is no one coming to the f library, please? Hmm. 
maybe having a bunch of chairs will make people visit. <gasps> oh, Yar! Oh, we got our first visitor. Yes, it worked. Just need to add more chairs, just as always. Yes, yes. Very good. Oh, yes, you come as well. Oh, I just needed to... Add yes! I just need to add, I needed to add more chairs. It makes sense. And another one. Yeah, come in, come in. Le read. Now that the villagers had become used to the wall, I could finish it. And just between you and me, a secret function is that people that enter the country will have a pretty difficult time escaping. My citizens had been eating raw potatoes and meat for a while. We cannot have salmonella spread, so I made a kitchen. The gravel wall will continuously crumble and fall into food for that extra crunch. I also added a carpet, which will soak up all the kitchen dirt and start to rot. Finally, I hung up a picture in honor of my babushka and the cooking legend himself. Where's the lamb sauce? But even that didn't return my workers to peak efficiency. Mm, work, you lazy bums! Uh, rather than making my people happy, why don't I just redirect that hate somewhere else? I can finally pay back those hogs for what they've done to me and even make them the scapegoat. Okay, I can't bring up two relevant or scientific arguments. Uh, they will just be contested and the villagers won't understand them anyway. Now my people can not only feel superior for reading the library, but the pictures of a boar living in a barn that is better than their dirt shack should make them jealous. The measures removed all dissatisfaction about food and work, but not housing? Bliat! I'll have to resort to turning my entire population into vodka addicts. Hmm. If it's communist vodka that's being sold, then it should be fun. Now we just need a tavern to distribute the alcohol. <laughs> what? 64 emeralds for the blueprint? Fine architect, but I'll have my friend Vazovsky right here watch you, so you don't raise your prices even further. I will be at the capitalistic village squeezing out the last bits of resources they have. Oh, wait. <laughs> am, I in in am I interrupting something? Anyway, I have no idea what the druid does, but thanks to the new lumberjack, I won't need to go around chopping trees. My prized possession of this emerald hall was the butcher, for whom I carved out a dungeon below the town hall. If an unseemly incident would crop up, he would be ready to not only kill animals. A part of this operation, hidden in the shadows of our town, is this propagandist. He disguises himself as a proletariat and periodically throws his army to the air while shouting something I want my people to believe. Subscribe to Leo! Now that I'm committed to turning all my people into vodka addicts, let us use all my non-existent architectural skill. Wait, this seems like the perfect place to ingrain the values of my party even further. Instead of having comfortable tables near the windows, let's have everyone stare at the wall. No, even better than that, the wall has cheerful slogans that promote our country. I can already hear the clinking of emeralds. Sweet, sweet emeralds. What? So many people want to visit our wonderful inn at its opening? Yes, have a seat, dear sir. Just stare at the wall, drink, regret your life choices and pass out. Now that my citizens are happy drinking their first bottles of vodka, I can solidify our power the old-fashioned way. Just as with a wall, I would need to slowly introduce more and more soldiers so my citizens won't panic. Starting with training, I will burn the revolutionary party's ideal into my soldiers' tiny brains by having them fight against dummies who have the face of whores. Oh. Their fighting spirit seemed to also translate to bad which I can only approve of. The new child would obviously need to learn our values, but uh, children aren't as important as soldiers, farmers and new homes. There are even more complaints about overcrowding now. People are pooping on the street and the danger of a house collapse is always imminent. But I can't go back on my decision to make all those houses out of dirt now. Might make me look like a weak leader. Today has been a tragic day. Normally people should leave some potatoes in the community chest, so the farmers can replant them. But 
they didn't. I can't punish anyone, because else it would be official that we couldn't produce any more vodka. And I immediately went to raid another capitalistic village, and this time stored the valuables in my private chest. Uh, people are angry, but they would be even more angry if we had no vodka. My captain even claimed a golden apple as his dinner, and I had to reassert my dominance. Even my propagandist refused to work on Sundays, saying that he needed time off to be the best at his duties. A control is slipping out of my hand. If even my old companions fail me, I'll need to make sure that their children are loyal. I only use the best materials to make the school. There is enough place for nearly 30 students, and I even hired an expert. That unlucky streak was luckily broken when one of my villagers died. Uh, of course I mourned the loss, but my people finally don't gossip when I increase the numbers of soldiers or hire someone to enchant their gear. I also found a way around the problem of my propagandist refusing to work by simply placing a record player in the middle of the village. Ah, such a wonderful song. If my propagandist still refused to work a seven day week now, I have something prepared for him in the newly renovated butcher dungeon. Although I dreaded doing so, I went back to the capitalistic village to bring back an actual boar for a sort of museum to focus the villagers anger once more on the board. Yes. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> yes. Uh, I call the board Jaden, which is the most hated name due to lifescience.com. And if the URL has science in it, then it's definitely a credible source. I placed a golden apple over the cage, which would prompt the villagers to get close to the cage, and the boar would then attack them, which would fuel their anger. I still had not found the perpetrator behind the potato incident. My fucking potato! So I started a wall of potato farm. When I went underground to gather stone for another project, I found out that the miner had not slept for two weeks. At the end of his shift, he would only make it halfway to his home before having to go back to work. As a merciful ruler, I of course helped the poor man out and told him that he should sleep on the floor. Thanks to all my hard work, this town has already more than 30 inhabitants and it's rapidly growing. In this rapidly changing environment, the people will need to have someone to look up to. And why not take it literally? This mountain will be a great base for a sculpture of my stoic face. <laughs> uh, maybe let's stick to building keywords for now. Ah, much better. After all my hard work, I deserve a fancy, personal manner far away from those stinking peasants. I even went all fancy pants with the roof. Now that I have a wooden house, people should be allowed to buy one from me as well. And they should really treasure that privilege. I hadn't realized it because I'd been building for quite a while, but my people were suffering from severe withdrawal syndrome. After reassuring everyone, I harvested the potatoes and made some vodka. But you, you obviously must taste your own creation before you sell it to the public. Oh, oh the fuck. You know what? I suddenly do not feel like selling it. This is too good for the peasants. Why should I... Why should I get more farmers or teachers? Let's just get a bunch of soldiers and peasants, well, no, propagandists to control the masses. Well, uh, hey, you! Work harder! Why are you so slow? You use this feedback. You as well! And you! Oh, this is great. Hey, what are you, what are you doing? I, I'm the ruler of this place. I told you not to attack me. You, you insolent misfit! Are you actually planning to actually kill me? 